Hello, Jarris Mitchell. I work with Red Hat. If you're not familiar with Red Hat, I don't blame you. We are working on our awareness. Uh, Red Hat is an enterprise software company. We use open source development to build Linux and, and various other systems. Anybody in the room familiar with open source? Hooray! That's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna talk to you about how weird it is to do SEO at an open source agency. For those of you who don't know, so the way that development works at Red Hat is these community projects are contributed to by people who care about them, and it sort of rolls up into a software, and we harden it and deploy it for enterprise. So let's say a security threat occurs in the Linux kernel, some passionate person will come up with a fix for it. They'll post it publicly in the source code. People will double check it, make sure it works, make sure it doesn't add any other problems, and then it'll go to Fedora, which is our community project, and then to Red Hat Open Source Linux, or uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So since our company was founded on open source, it permeates the culture. What that means is, the corporate pitch is that it is a flat hierarchy meritocracy um, and that everyone works together and everyone gets to do uh, things that they're passionate about, which is mostly true. I've been with the company for a year and this is kind of how it appeared to me. Open source <sighs> creates a lot of arguments. <laughs> Anybody like seltzer water? Familiar with LaCroix? Um, at our company, we have uh, essentially complimentary drinks for the staff on every floor. And every year, there is a rebellion about what flavor of LaCroix we put on every floor. <laughs> so around Q4, every year, there's a survey that goes out where each person that works at Red Hat gets an allocation of four points to go to which flavor of LaCroix they want. <laughs> and we come up with a rotating schedule of two flavors per quarter for the entire year. <laughs> Clever, passionate people create a lot of noise. Um, and that includes agency work. They build a lot of campaign landing pages. They have a lot of events because they're passionate and excited about everything. And it means that efforts are frequently duplicated because someone thinks they can do it better, because someone thinks, Dave didn't do it right. <laughs> Even though Dave's also a very clever person, so that's weird. We have 984, 984 domains that we pay for every month. Some of them, are wonderful. Some of them are sort of empty pages that we just still pay for because we haven't shut them down yet. Oh, of that, we have 10 core web properties. These are the web properties that have consistent design elements, that have content strategies associated with them, that perform a function or perform a role. So this is this is the world that I deal with right now, except for access. There's a very clever person who deals with access. So Red Hat has two interesting problems. Our web ecosystem is huge. Um, and it steps all over itself. Uh, I believe there are nine different product detail pages across our entire web ecosystem. And our competitors are either larger than us with a better backlink profile, or scrappier than us. We are, there are technologies that overlap with ours that uh, small startups, they can deploy content a lot faster than we can, so when there's a big issue, they can talk about it before we even get around to it. Here's my problem, and the problem of my department, which is marketing operations. How do you deploy a traditional black box at an open source company where everyone's gonna ask a bunch of questions and figure it out, when all we as SEOs wanna do is just act like wizards. It's pretty simple. Just don't be a wizard. This is a stock photo 
I am amazed at stock photos. This is just, he's so angry. Um, instead of being a, a wizard, be a teacher. Show people that it's not wizard stuff. Show people that it makes sense. Some won't know. Some have no clue what SEO is. Some people remember 2006. Some people know the wrong way. And some people know the three tips to get to page one in a day and a half. It is your job, my job. Oh, and some don't care. So it doesn't matter to them. It's not going to do anything for them. Why should they care? Um, it is your or my uh, job to correct, re-educate, and inform as to why it matters, why we do this, why we want people to find our stuff when they search for our stuff. And another thing about open source. This slide was be a salesman, and when I presented it internally to my departments and a bunch of other people, there was about a 30-minute conversation about whether or not it should be salesman or spokesperson. Um, I changed it to spokesperson just because I was tired of having the conversation. Um, I can't wrangle 984 websites by myself, and I doubt any of you could. If you could, you're wonderful. You're way cooler than I am. Um, and in a meritocracy, it's doubly true because you can't use traditional governance measures. You can't just slam a gate down and prevent people from standing up new websites. They'll find a way around it. They'll put it on their company card. <laughs> um, so you have to be honest about what you can and can't do. You have to be honest about the potential results. And you have to talk to them in a way that it isn't the wizard pitch. It isn't, this is how we get to page one immediately. And this is, this is the secret key. Connect it to key business, in, business initiatives. By bi key business initiatives, I mean um, whatever the uh, top-down marketing goal is. Or, yeah, things people care about. Be a Sherpa. I like the idea of a Sherpa. Sherpas are your friend. They keep you from falling off a mountain. So you need them to trust you. You need them to understand that you have their best interest in mind and that you're trying to amplify their work. You're trying to make them look super cool, make them look like the wizard. Um, systematic change is uncomfortable. And the gentler, or not gentle, the more caring you can be in that process, the easier it gets, because you're not some jerk who's just kicking in a door and telling them that the work they did last year sucks. You're a person who's coming in and saying, hey, you do cool stuff, let's do cooler stuff. And the way that you do this, especially in a, in a system where everyone has a lot of opinions, and those opinions even out, is you use real numbers. You use data to break the surface tension. Um, so the key that I found in my first, or came in kind of kind of overwhelmed. And I realized that I had to get a win kind of early on um, just to show everyone that it was reasonable. And I had to build a number of allies uh, with overlapping goals so that we could go and tackle some big, crazy, weird stuff. Everybody knows this. Who has never received this email before in, in their life? Okay, I see no hands. That means I'm in the right room. A business unit asked me for an analysis. Oh, yeah, everyone cares. The people who say they don't care, they haven't been in a situation where they're, they realize that they do. Business unit asked for an analysis. If you can't see, I apologize. Um, this is a query, Fuse ESB. Uh, JBoss, Red Hat JBoss inter, er, Enterprise Application, uh, bleh. Red Hat JBoss Fuse is a product of ours that wasn't ranking for its answer box. This is a non-branded query and they were only really ranking for branded queries. So business unit asked me for an analysis. I show this to them. 
And then everybody got really into SEO. So they, you know, I showed them that and they said, all right, what do we do? We sat down in a series of like three, four hour meetings, it was nuts. I told them how we do it, super simple. We're not contextualizing ESB, the acronym, in terms of this, this query. Like, because ESB means extra special bidder, which is a beer type, or enterprise service bus, which is this software. Google knew that JBoss Fuse was an enterprise service bus, but not that it was an ESB. So I said, look, we just need like five keystrokes. Parentheses, ESB, close parentheses. Put it in there, it's fine, it'll take us like three minutes. It actually took us three months. So you lay out the plan, you lay it out in full, pragmatic with the goals, hey, might work, might not. If it doesn't work, we'll iterate on it, we'll get to it. Um, and you show them that there is no secret sauce. Because they'll sit in a room and they'll wait for like, okay, where's the wizard magic come from? It's, th there's none, guys. It's just words on page and links. And you let them challenge it. You let them do their own research, you help kind of guide them. You get them involved and you get them to care about your thing. Because if they care about your thing, they'll do it. And this is no longer that. Uh, somebody edited Wikipedia to, so now that's a Wikipedia thing. Um, but, I have never seen a product marketing manager more happy than when they made this query after it had been crawled and jumped into that position. And he was like, oh, we actually did it. Yeah, man, like, we, this is the thing we can do. Um, so we measured the change in success. I told them and then told their bosses because they can, they can go and talk to their bosses and that just kind of looks like braggadocio. Um, and you don't want that. You want to go to their bosses and say, this person was a pleasure to work with and we did some really cool stuff with it um, and they should feel proud about it. Um, and I encourage them to feel the ownership and take the credit for the work because I explained how to do it, but I didn't actually do it. They were the one that went in and do it. Went in and do it? Ugh. Went in and did it. So they got to, they got to acknowledge that it was their win. Um, and because of that, this one, this one marketing manager in this one business unit advocated for the work that I was doing across the rest of his team. The rest of his team came to me and we replicated and then their business unit went to another business unit and told them about it. And I mean, now I'm super, super busy. Uh, <laughs> so answer all the questions, even, I know, we all get tired of answering the same questions over and over and over again. But write, uh, like, if, that's, if that is the problem that you are having, write a templated email and just copy and paste it. Like, it's not that hard, and if you've answered it 15 times, you can just send it back out. It's okay, nobody's gonna notice. <sighs> I'm giving away my secrets here. Um, so we've started to wrangle it. Um, we're, we're, we're starting to tackle the 984. Um, we have it down We've isolated out about 36 websites that actually have value, and we're about to just shut down the rest and 404 them. Like, just let them go. Like, they have no value whatsoever, and that's okay. Um, and meetings are getting shorter. Like, it's not million four hour long meetings anymore, because now there are people within departments and within organizations who, can, who have gone through the ringer with me and they know the answers now. And they know, like they feel confident with their own understanding, so they can answer some of those questions. And then when it gets more complicated, they can come to me. Remember, don't be a wizard. They're the worst. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>